you with us here on CNBC. Well, uh, Dinsho Irani is now joining us. He's CEO at uh, Helios Mutual Fund. Uh, Dinsho, great to have you with us here as always on the program. Appreciate your time. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the basic question before we get into what you like and don't like and what you've been doing is uh, what people a lot of, I think most want to know is, is, the, is this period of volatility backs kind of behind? We may know, not go back to that up and up boom kind of a market, uh, but are the, are, the, are the big swings behind or should we expect more? I mean, this is not done yet. Your thoughts then, Shaw? Uh, good afternoon, Prashant, and a very good afternoon to you, uh, your viewers and the team at CNBC. So, Prashant, basically our call is uh, that uh, this year itself, forget about uh, uh, the present times, I think this year itself is going to be very volatile. It's going to be a very choppy time period. And if I was to go chronologically, I think it will start off with probably the quarterly numbers. The March quarter numbers, I don't think are going to be that great. Our feel is they'll be fairly disappointing. I mean, we, we talked to quite a few uh, uh, companies and industries and stuff, and you can see that uh, palpable weakness in demand in the markets as such. So it's obvious that uh, the numbers are not going to be that great. In fact, if you remember, even the December numbers, they were mainly driven by the uh, the margin expansion rather than from top line. The top line has been coming up. Top line growth, in fact, was a very low single digit, if I remember, uh, for the December numbers. So March is going to be a disappointment. In fact, it will be the first quarter after probably six consecutive quarters of earnings growth uh, that you'll see some uh, cut in earnings uh, going into the into the March quarter as such. And if, if things don't improve, uh, at least on the rural front, that may continue even in the June quarter. So you're talking about two consecutive bad. So that's one reason why we expect that choppiness to continue. The second and uh, one is obviously elections. I mean, they play a lot of, uh, role in uh, the, the, the markets are fairly volatile around that time. The budget is going to be very transformatory. That's what I've transitioned to I believe so. Uh, but still, I mean, there'll be a lot of rumors flying around at the point in time. It will create some amount of choppiness. And the third one, the fourth one, sorry, is obviously the interest. Uh, saw the uh, speech of uh, the FOMC, uh, so the, the, the Fed chair yesterday, rather this morning. It was also not to cut rates in the sense that uh, he, it is hard, he believes that. Have it there. Uh, it's been 25 months that the uh, unemployment rate has remained person, person, and that obviously scares him a bit. So it's obvious that it won't happen. Reasons will work towards the market not doing too well. All the positive points are already built in, so we expect a fair bit of choppiness. I'm, I'm not saying that the markets are going to correct. Uh, maybe there's a time correction. The fact is, it's going to be not a straight line correction. It's going to be a choppy correction going ahead. All right. Hi, then. Sure. So we got that a bit of choppiness is what we could be in store, uh, brace ourselves. But uh, how are you all positioned then? I, th I think on tech, you were not too positive. I think you were a little bit negative on that. So uh, that was a few months ago. So how is that stance now? And from the auto space, I think you all prefer the auto ancillary. Uh, uh, fill us in with what you're like. So, Nigel, actually, you're right. I mean, the tech space, we were negative. We continue to be negative. Uh, we haven't changed our stance. I think uh, still there's a bit of uh, froth lying in that particular sector as such. So we expect that to come up. And if I'm talking about, uh, I mean, the best case scenario or the base case scenario for US being a soft landing, then that sector has to suffer first before uh, that happens. And in fact, if there's a recession being built in, then it's a problem going forward. So that's one area. Autos, we've not been positive for a while, uh, frankly, because of... Uh, uh, one thing that we always uh, believe in is uh, you need to have your themes which are sands of any disruption. And the disruption in auto is the EVs, and we don't expect that to go away. In fact, uh, now we're talking about uh, hybrids and hydrogen playing havoc with the ICE uh, space. Or so it's obvious that uh, there'll be a lot of choppiness in that uh, sector too. So it's better to avoid that sector as of now. So these are the two reasons, and uh, you asked us how we're playing this. Uh, frankly, I mean, that was the sole reason for us to bring out a balance advantage fund. In fact, uh, we closed it yesterday as such. Uh, and uh, our, our call is that uh, the investors are, are should be looking at options where they have a, uh, where, where a fund can offer them low volatility, 
cut down on the downside and partake if the market starts moving on the upside. So it's going to be very well managed uh, fund that we're looking at uh, in that space. So that's the reason why we brought up that. Hmm. Okay, got that. Then Shah, hi. Afternoon. <laughs> Just wondering, did you buy any PSUs in the fall at all? Yeah, so 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 we I have to so we keep doing that. So we actually we what we've done we uh, I won't say the names, but we look at opportunities when this uh, fall did happen. So basically, what we uh, proactively did was uh, we moved out uh, moved out from some of the mid caps and small caps, and uh, we did add up on uh, tank up on a few large caps. Uh, some of the PSUs happened to be in the large caps, so we did tank up there and. By the way, there were some issues in the mid-cap space of which we did uh, add up on. So we remain with the fundamentally sound uh, stories as such, uh, where growth is quite visible. So that is what we'll be playing with uh, in this time. No, but give us some more clues, right? Because PSU is a wide, wide universe. PSU large caps meaning uh, oil marketing companies. Do you mean Coal India? I mean, it's a wide universe. Then you have power utilities. This, this, there are lots of them. So, which ones do you think are safe, have decent value, and one can still be uh, sort of betting on? So, okay, so you mentioned one of them, the oil marketing companies. We did uh, okay. add up to those. Uh, we added up to some of the banks that we own. Uh, and the call here is that uh, if the budget is going to be a, a, a earth shaking one, it has to have some amount of PSU divestments built in. And I think that's the one that we are playing with, the scenario that is that we're playing with, because if uh, there's going to be a lot of capexes on, uh, say, infra and uh, on on, on uh, capexes going forward. It obviously has to be funded through something, right? And if you want to keep your uh, borrowings at a limit, uh, the only other way is probably uh, divestment in PSUs. So I think that's a call that we've taken here, and that's why we're playing that uh, going forward. Mm. Uh, what about defense railways? Uh, they corrected quite a bit. They were down 20, 30 percent from their peak levels. Did any of it make it? Any of the names there make it to your buy list? No, unfortunately have... not. <laughs> no, no. Have they fallen me... a little bit more? Would you have considered it, or do you think it's completely no. out of whack? Even if it falls, you know, some more, it's still not, uh, you know, attractive enough for you. So basically, the railway stocks. Uh, I don't. I think too much was done there. I. I, I... I don't think we'll be excited even if they fall a bit more as such. But within the railways, there's one particular stock which is more of tourism related, right? So that's the one which we uh, picked up, I think. Uh, so, so I won't take the name, but you can very well guess what I'm talking about. So that was the one which we picked up. And that's because we are very gungo on domestic tourism. So that's what we felt that this was a stock that uh, got beaten up just because it had a railway name in it, but it was actually to do with uh, more with the uh, the catering and the bookings and stuff like that within railways. So that's what we liked about that stock, and that's what we picked up there. But having said that, um, in the defense space, we added to only one of the names that we uh, liked in the defense space in the PSU defense space. Uh, basically, it's a it's an electronics manufacturer rather than actually a, a pure service provider to a specific service of defense. So it's a service agnostic play, and that's what we added to uh, when the when the stocks fell. So. <clears throat> okay, uh, no, got that. By the way, uh, Dinshaw, any <clears throat> uh, any other sort of uh, single stocks that you've added to your portfolio over the, from the last time that we spoke? So from the portfolio that you've seen in my Feb uh, uh, disclosed portfolio, uh, I don't think we added any new name here. Uh, we just, because March was such a choppy month that it was making more sense to add to your existing uh, uh, favorites that you liked rather than... Uh, uh, dig out new names. We are in the process of doing it, but uh, as of now, we not uh, added any new names. Uh, you want to share uh, what you're working on? That <laughs> give us a give us a hint. <laughs> I don't think a company who's looking at MNS tells you what which company they're targeting as of now. So no, I won't be sharing any names out there. <laughs> you know, I, 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 let me ask you then. Uh, Angel, right? Angel broking. Uh, stock, uh, actually, let me ask you about two names. One is Angel. The other is IAFL. Uh, the reason I mentioned these is because uh, grow, uh, fast growing companies, both uh, Angel fell some uh, 35 40 percent from the highs. IFL, of course, is halved in value. There is the uh, RBI uh, sort of observations and order uh, there. Uh, again, but growth before all of this was, of course, extremely fast. Uh, the, you know, the NBFC has been doing well across segments. Any, any thoughts on these two names, uh, Dinshaw? 
So I'll tell you, I mean, I forget the two names that you mentioned, but the fact is that the court deal with stock markets, right? And we actually liked, we like names, I mean, which are, which we call as gatekeepers to uh, the wealth that India is going to produce, right? So that's why we like uh, names like Motilal that we have in our portfolio. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've been studying these two stocks. Uh, so we'll be obviously, uh, I won't be commenting on that, but the fall has made it much more exciting for us to look at those names also as such. So I'll, I'll leave it here. Uh, Prashant, I think I've given you enough hints uh, of what our thought process is on this. Okay, you already own Motilal. So yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. I mean, you know, you 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 already have something in that. By the way, exchanges, uh, then sure, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, you know, there's uh, at BSE in the commodity side, MCX, and perhaps at some point NSC, but uh, there? So we have an MCX with us. Uh, okay. Uh, and obviously, we'll be looking at uh, any new offering which comes by also quite uh, closely. Okay, uh, <clears throat> got that. Then sure, just one uh, sort of quick word on real estate, right? Uh, you, you know, is it time to start making, is the market starting to make a little bit of differentiation between say, uh, Mumbai-based players, which are doing very well, Loda, etc. Uh, whereas you look at something like a Soba, you look at Prestige, these still remain 20-25% lower uh, from where they were uh, a fortnight back. Uh, just, uh, just your thoughts there. So, Prashant, actually, uh, we used to own uh, uh, one name in real estate uh, when we moved out on that name because we felt that uh, the sector was becoming too hot uh, for us to handle because even on the book value basis, uh, they were looking very expensive as such. Forget about the fees and EV bitters or whatever you want to uh, value them at. And actually, I believe that whatever is uh, happening today, I think there's a lot of fraud built into that sector. If anything, the regional players look much more uh, sober, but mainly these guys are more, uh, I would say, uh, politically uh, connected people. So it's basically better to stay away from uh, those kind of stocks as such. But anyway, we're not too keen as of now on the on the sector. Okay, uh, maybe a little too hot. <laughs> That's the view, but one is starting to hear that. I mean, the first murmurs that maybe uh, it is getting a little... Uh, too stretched on one side, but uh, we'll see. Then, Shah, it's having you with us here. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for this chat here on CNBC TV. For more news and updates, all you need to do is follow CNBC TV 18 on all of our digital platforms.